if we basically look at the number one, although it applies to all the players, it's just the easiest example to show. If, if the number one, there are two situations that he will have an advantage. One is when he's clearly the first player, everybody's behind him, the ball has gone by him, and there's really nothing to stop him hitting that ball. But he could still commit a foul. So he's got all the advantages. The ball's in front of him. Nobody can really stop him um, getting to the ball. But some really clever, experienced player could still make him foul. So if you looked around, just as you've seen the opponent coming, you make sure that you really finish the lateral movement and you're absolutely on the line so that you go up and no way will you fall. Secondly, you can be in front of the opponent, but this time the ball is in front of the opponent. The opponent has the line of the ball, but you are in front. Now basically, if you know what you're doing, you still have the advantage because you're in front. And therefore, and you know how to ride off, which we'll be talking about later, you can just come o over, win the ride off, and hit the ball. You'll have to hit it on the other side. But if you decide to try and nip it in front of him, because you're in front, you will then be blown for a foul. And if you hesitate to take your advantage, he might get to you and give you a push at the last minute and lose it. So you've got to take and use your advantage immediately. You cannot give away a second time. So there's the two situations where you have the advantage. One, you have the line, you are in front, but you could change your angles, you hit the ball, you could, you could make a mistake that a, a clever, wily opponent behind will take advantage of. And many beginners fall into that trap. The other one is, your opponent has the line, but you are in front. Now we come to the two situations where you're at a disadvantage. The first of these, which is the third overall, you're very apt not to realize you're at your disadvantage because you are so busy chasing the ball. You take the situation on this table that the, the line of the ball is straight in front of you, you have the line, but the opponent is in front is in front of you and you just think all I got to do is go faster than him and I can, I can get to the ball. You increase the advantage of the opponent by just going as fast as you can for the ball because he sees you coming you're like say a sitting duck for him just to pick you off. Fast you come the easier it is for him just to pick you off, take you across and take the, take the backhand. So what can you do to get that advantage, very difficult, to get that advantage from him? And the answer is, it won't necessarily work, but it's worth a try. Instead of showing him, you must veer over towards him. Now if you think about it, you're now putting him in danger of crossing you. Because if he, he now hasn't got such an easy ride off. You still have more right to the ball than he does. And then, so as, and as you're coming up, you're aiming now to hit him on, on his left shoulder quite a bit, and then you hope he will bring you back to hit the ball. So you, it's quite complicated, and it is quite difficult, but it is your only chance of turning the advantage that you've lost back in your favor. The fourth situation, which is even harder, the advantage is that your opponent is quite a lot, so he's either to your left or right, but let's say he's totally on the other side of the line of the ball to which you are. Now, this brings out a fallacy in polo, where people say that if you cross the line of the ball, you commit a foul. That statement is itself a fallacy because if there's no one behind you when you cross the line, you're not fouling anybody. The first thing you've got to do is actually cross the line. By crossing the line, you're then in a position 
to take him on, and you've probably not committed a foul. Whereas if you just continue up to here, you will be you either just will have no chance of getting the ball, or you will have to commit a foul to go into him and get it. Now you, you may be asking yourselves, why don't, if I'm this player, why don't I go up and take the near side forehand? And there's a possibility that if you're very quick, you, you could achieve to do that. But remember, by having to go that quick, or then giving yourself an extra difficult shot for a start, which means you either miss it or just you blast it left or right and it won't help your team. And if he's a more experienced player than you, um, as you come up, he will simply slow down and come across to win the right off and take the near side backhand. So, although it is an option, I think it, 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 it is far better to get across the line and, and take him on from the other side of the line rather than go from the other side. You still may lose this, but you're giving your opponent far more problems. 